Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Those conversations have zero evaluation from me. What they show is that I'm willing to support my child in achieving what she values. And I want to talk to her about where she's going and what she's trying to do. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Kylie, how are you doing? It's been a tough weekend. Yeah. It's uh, been hard. We are so grateful to everyone who listened to our podcast yesterday and, and shared kind things about uh, us farewelling our dog, Benson. Uh, kind of felt a little bit self-indulgent to talk about in some ways, but at the same time, it's the sort of thing that every family is going to go through if you have a pet, right? As I have shared our news with other friends, I have been amazed at how many people have gone through the process and how how difficult it was for each of them going through it as well. Mm. It's, it's been so much harder than I would have expected. Yeah. We should introduce ourselves for those of you who are new. I'm Justin. I'm here with Kylie, my wife, mum to our six kids. I'm the founder of happyfamilies.com.au. Uh, we're going to get back into the swing of things today, though. Are you ready for it? Of course. Okay. All right. So we're going to put our behind in the past. Our behind in the past. Put, put our past behind us. That's an old line from The Lion King. I couldn't help myself. And uh, dive into what we usually do on a Tuesday, which is answer a question, a challenge, a difficulty that one of our podcast listeners is struggling with. And this is a cracker, especially for this time in term two when reports are on their way out from Lee. Kylie, what did Lee ask us via podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au? Just wondering about what Justin and Kylie do with regards to celebrating their children's reports or giving feedback to their children. My daughter is five and we have and still maintain as her parents that it is her attitude and effort that we are concerned about. What kind of themes would you discuss or encourage about report sharing with your child? Do you point out areas that still need work? according to the teacher. I want to make the celebration meaningful and intentional and I just want some pointers either way. It's report time. Half yearly reports are about to come out and this is one of those questions that every parent wonders about. What do I say when the report arrives? Especially whether it's good news or bad news. What do I, what do I say? It's, it's tricky. Well, I think this is going to be an interesting conversation because you and I have a pretty different take on this. Yeah, we kind of do, don't we? This is something that's been a... A, a bugbear? No, bug, I was going to say we've clashed, but I think that's too strong. But we, but we definitely have a different approach. Why don't you outline your approach and see if that's helpful for Lee and every other parent who's about to open up an envelope that's got their child's mid-year report in it, and then, um, and then I'll share a few of my ideas. Well, my parents were very much like Lee's parents growing up. They would get my report card at the end of the year and we'd, we'd go through it together. And usually that would end up with us heading down to Hungry Jack's because that was my favourite hangout. <laughs> right. Go and get a whopper. As, as an 11 or 12 year old. Um, and, and we'd celebrate together. And generally speaking, my parents didn't eat Hungry Jack's, so they would watch me eat. But we would celebrate the fact that I had, you know, had a successful year. So what are you celebrating? I'm celebrating effort because likely my parents didn't worry so much about my grades. They, they celebrated the fact that I actually got through another year. And that I had put effort into what I'd done. Right. Okay. So increasingly, a lot of schools are adding effort to the report card and teachers are grading effort as well. And I'm, I, I just, I cannot put out of my mind that time that our daughter, Annie, I think she was probably in about grade three or grade four. Now, Annie is a conscientious kid. She's diligent. And of all of our six daughters, she is without question the one who puts in the effort conscientious. She is so to, consistent yes. and, and wants to do the right thing and wants to um, wants to please her teacher. She's, she's so, well, conscientious is the word. And I remember she opened up her report to go through it with you and she got a few Bs and Cs, a couple of As. It was kind of just a bit of a mixed bag, but she was really, really distraught because we had at, at until that point always said, we don't really care what grades you get. We just want to encourage you to always put a really good effort in. And in the grading box for effort, Annie had received a couple of C's. That devastated her. I remember her saying, I failed trying. I failed trying, Dad. I didn't even get an A for trying and I tried so hard, but my teacher just couldn't see it. And that one incident has absolutely changed the way that I see reports. Now, I, I was aware of a whole lot of evidence and research around grades, but that one particular experience forced me to go back and look at the literature, I guess almost with new eyes and read what the research actually said rather than just going along with what we'd always done. So your approach is every time the kids come home with a report card, you actually sit down and go through it with them. 
well, they're pretty excited for me to have a look at it and see what they've done and, and tell me, you know, how well they went in particular areas. Every child has their favourites. And so it's a given they're going to end up with good marks there. But we get to talk about the things that they're, they're struggling with and the acknowledgement from their teachers, the areas that they could work on. And we have a conversation around that, whether or not that's actually accurate in their minds, you know, when it comes to their effort or when it comes to their participation in class or um, I'm not going to go into any academic stuff with them because <laughs> I'm not going to be much help there. But um, talking to them about, you know, the things that – I guess a part of their character, I think they're important. I would imagine that 95% of our listeners would be right there with you. So, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. You sit down, you go through it, you talk about their strengths, their weaknesses, what they're enjoying, uh, have a look at how the teacher is perceiving their work in the classroom. Uh, it's just that- We even talk about the relationship they have with their teacher because that has a huge impact on their report card. Well, a lot of teachers would say that it can't possibly, but we've got some reasonably interesting research from around the world that suggests that it probably has more of an impact than than most people want to admit. But you and I, we really do differ in the way report card time season happens. Uh, How would you describe my response to report cards in a word? Apathetic. (laughs) We're going to talk about why I completely disregard and ignore every report card my children ever get right after the break. It's the Happy Families Podcast. For a happier family, try a Happy Families membership because a happy family doesn't just happen. Details at happyfamilies.com.au. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And today we are trying to answer Lee's question on how to celebrate and offer feedback to our children around report cards. But you and I differ on this. So I'm really interested. I've shared my viewpoint. How do you feel about this report card sharing? Well, the first thing that I'm going to highlight is that in this particular email, we've got Lee who has a five-year-old. And I just think that um, with, with no disrespect to Lee and anyone else who has a five-year-old who does this, because I'm, this, this is not about parent shaming. This is about trying to rethink the way we consider our interaction with our kids around evaluation and grading. My feeling is that at, at the age of five, the last thing we need to worry about is what's on the report card. I think that is completely irrelevant to their character, to their development. In fact, I would not only say that, that it's irrelevant, I would say that it's counterproductive. Five-year-olds developmentally are just learning how to think. They're still, in some cases, trying to develop that thing called theory of mind. They don't really know how to regulate their emotions particularly well or their behaviours, especially if they're the younger kids in their class. And, and five years old, right? We're talking about kinder or prep. We're talking about grade one at the, at the, at the highest so, I'm actually really surprised that, that at five we're giving report cards. Well, and, and I, I don't think we should. I think it's disgraceful. I think I, I utterly and fundamentally reject the idea that children under the age of eight or ten need report cards. The idea that we need to be evaluating them and sending home something attached to a grade or a letter or something like that, they're supposed to be learning how to share. They're learning how to use a knife and fork for crying out loud. They're learning how to sleep all night alone in their own bedroom and we're giving them these evaluations that look so official and that tell them how they're doing in class compared to everyone else. I completely reject the idea that our little kids need report cards. In fact, I'd argue even that big kids don't necessarily need report cards, but I'll come to that in a sec. The second thing just in the email that I want to emphasise is this idea that do we do we make a big deal about her attitude and effort? That's what we're concerned about, attitude and effort. And to me, implicit in that statement, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I hear it from parents all the time. So this isn't about Lee's email. This is more about a general conversation I have with parents. They say, we just want the kids to maintain a good attitude. We just want them to maintain their effort, which seems to imply to me that parents implicitly know that school is going to undermine motivation for learning that going to school is going to get in the way of a good education or motivation for education. There's um, this suggestion that motivation, attitude, effort might actually decline. Oh, hang on. We've got decades of research that shows that that's exactly what happens. No wonder parents are worried about it because that's what, unfortunately, our current school system, in spite of the very best teachers who love the kids and work so hard, we have a system that fundamentally at every level – for most kids, undermines their interest in natural curiosity and learning. 
Well, considering this is the podcast for the Time Poor Parent who just wants answers now, how do we help Lee? What can she do to make this time with her child more meaningful? I'm guessing that my first piece of advice is not going to be listened to by many parents. My first piece of advice is just throw the report in the bin. Don't look at it. Whether they're in primary school or high school, don't even worry. You're shaking your head. Well, no, I'm not. But (laughs) when we first got married, your mum gave me a box of all your keepsakes. Yeah. And she hadn't done a great job of collating everything, but she had envelopes for each year. And just in the envelopes was your report cards, your school photos, anything that, you know, any achievements you had made through the year. And I really enjoyed going through that. And what I found was as I went through that each year, there was a theme (laughs) to your report cards and the different behaviours that you displayed from the time you were tiny. What was the theme? Well, I don't remember now. It was so long ago. Goodness me, we've been married for over two decades. I think it said something like, uh, Justin does not live up to his potential. Something like that. (laughs) And what was amazing was just watching that these were handwritten. So people didn't have access to previous years or anything. Like your teachers saw in you a pattern. And I thought that was a really, I mean, that's that's intriguing to me. I agree that it's really interesting to look back historically and, and see that trend. And yet I would also make the argument when you look at somebody who is in their 30s or 40s, if you look at me in my mid 40s, gosh, my mid to late 40s, what's happening to me? How did that happen so fast? I don't think that my grade three report card or my grade eight report card actually says anything about the human that I've become and about the life that I've lived. I don't think that even getting a snapshot in time is useful for anything at all. It doesn't predict the future and it's a simple subjective evaluation of what a teacher thinks based on what happened over the last 12 to 24 weeks at school, full stop, end of story. So my my number one piece of advice is give it a cursory glance if you must, file it away for history if you choose because it could be fun, but don't. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Don't talk about it. Now, is that realistic? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think many parents are going to do that. So I've got some other advice for parents who can't help themselves. Oh, good. Because <laughs> you're looking at me like, are you serious? Let's cut it out. Our kids come home and they want to be acknowledged. They do. They do. And so here's what I do in terms of acknowledging kids. I say to them, how would you feel when you read that? How do you feel you did? Is it an accurate representation? What would you like the next one to look like? Those conversations have zero evaluation from me. What they show is that I'm willing to support my child in achieving what she values and I want to talk to her about where she's going and what she's trying to do. I'm not interested in what the teacher thinks. I'm interested in what my daughter thinks. Do you feel like that was fair? Yes, no? Huh, interesting. Why is that? Let's talk about what you want next time. How are you going to get there? How can I support you? To me, that's far more valuable as a conversation to a child than here's what your geography teacher says, here's what your math teacher says, here's what your English teacher says. With, with the greatest respect to teachers, I'm not that interested in what you think. I'm interested in a couple of things. Number one, does my child love learning? And number two, does my child love their friends? Because if my child says, I love learning and I want to do well at it and I love being at school with my friends, then they're going to be fine. They're going to do well. And that's my interest. I I came across a a quote in Joe Frost's book about raising kids. I'm not even going to give the title of the book. And for those of you who aren't sure, Joe Frost, uh, she's the super nanny. Mm -hmm. And she says, and I quote, the best rewards are attention, praise and love, which sounds great so far, doesn't it? And then she says this, the best rewards are attention, praise and love and should be held back when the child behaves badly. Oh. Stop it. Just stop it. If the kids haven't done well on their report, say, how'd that make you feel? What would you like the report to look like? How can I support you to get there next time? You just made me really sad. And if the child has done well on their report, you say, how'd that make you feel? What do you want the next one to look like? How can I support you to get there? Why'd that make you feel sad? Oh, I just... Because you're married to me and not Joe Frost? (laughs) This idea that we have to withhold our love from our children... If, yeah. they don't, if they don't perform to a certain level or if they don't do what we want them to do, that just breaks my heart. And I don't think that that's what Lee is getting at and I don't think any parent would, but yet this is what some of the advice is that's out there around grades and around this kind of stuff. It's just so unhealthy. Hey, I'm going to link to um, an article from a guy called Alfie Cohn. Alfie Cohn wrote a book called Punished by Rewards. In fact, he's written about 10 books and I just think he's absolutely 
brilliant and fascinating. And this article is called The Case Against Grades. And this is what he says. Grades diminish students' interest in what they're learning. A grading orientation and a learning orientation have been shown to be inversely related. And as far as I can tell, every study that's ever investigated the impact on intrinsic motivation of receiving grades has found a negative effect. He says, grades create a preference for the easiest possible task. And then he adds, grades tend to reduce the quality of students' thinking. There's a whole lot more in the article. It's brilliant. I'm a big believer in what he says, but it's a long article and we don't have time to read it. Um, That's my advice. That's the way I see report cards. I know that it's controversial. I know it's provocative. I know that you don't totally agree with me, but can we at least agree that we're probably not going to get that serious about this term's report? We won't be that serious about this term's report. So, Dr. Justin Coulson, tell me the take-homes. You're going to sum up what you've shared today to answer Lee's question. What are the two take-homes that you want to... So, I would say this. The take-home message is don't put educational pressure on your kids, number one. And going over reports and focusing on evaluations like that are only going to add pressure. And number two, just ask them if they love their friends, if they love being at school, if they love learning and then support them to love it more next term. Well, I'm looking forward to having those conversations with our kids. Sounds like I'm the one that's going over the reports this term, huh? (laughs) I'll just take them out for the milkshake afterwards. (laughs) We're both celebrating. Oh, is that right? We're just celebrating life. We don't need a report to go out and have a milkshake and celebrate. (laughs) Although I'd rather if we just bought the ice cream, brought it home and made it at home, we'll save ourselves a bundle. Yeah, no, I found the best banana thick (laughs) shake the other day. I am definitely going back there. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. If you are provoked by our podcasts. Good. We're delighted about that. We had a lot of Facebook messages yesterday about this question. My advice doesn't seem to be consistent with any of those messages, but you can jump onto Facebook and join the conversation. Just have a look at yesterday's post on the topic. And if you'd like more info about Happy Families, visit our website, happyfamilies.com.au. Happy Families.